It is now time to begin our weekly football teleconference. We start this morning with Morgan State Head Coach Lee Hole. Good morning, Coach Hole. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. You there? How, I'm here. Can you hear okay. me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, well, great. Well, Coach, great win for the Bears last week. Can you assess your team's performance against South Carolina State? Well, I'm, I'm very proud of our, our team. You know, obviously the week before, um, you know, we get, we got beat by A&T. And, um, you know, I was very proud of how they bounced back. You know, uh, it shows, you know, their true character. Um, came out, you know, and, uh, again, you know, we were behind. You know, we uh, we scored um, in, the, in the third quarter, um, and then we kicked off, and they ran the, kick, the, um, the kickoff return back for a touchdown. And then um, we responded, you know, in, in the fourth quarter there. Um, we went on a two-minute drive to, to win the game, and then our defense came out and, and stopped them. So, you know, those, those are the things that uh, has been happening all year long. You know, again, you know, we, we practice all those different kind of um, scenarios, you know, during the course of the, of, of the week. And the two-minute drill we do twice a week, and uh, it came back to, to help us out again. But I'm, I'm, just, I'm just very proud of our, our guys, you know, um, you know, Buddy does a does a great job there at South Carolina State, and he's done it for a, a lot of years. And for us to be able to to win a game like that, um, we haven't beaten South Carolina State at at home in 40 years. So that 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 was a big accomplishment for our team. And I'm just I'm just so proud of our guys and the way they keep fighting. Looking ahead this week, you face Delaware State in the quest to stay in the conference title race. Share your thoughts on the game. Well, um, Del Delaware State, you know, is is a, is a good football team. Um, you know, they they've got two conference wins, and, and obviously they beat a good team in in uh, Norfolk um, for one of their wins. So, you know, it's it's a team that we cannot overlook. Um, you know, we got to just go in and, and and play our game. They're going to come. It's a it's it's the last game for their seniors. Obviously, it's the last game for our our seniors at at home. Um, they're going to win, want to win the game, and they're going to come and uh, give us our, their their best shot. And we just got to be prepared for that and understand, you know, um, what we're getting ourselves into, um, and and just play our game. Well, coach, last week's win set many things into motion regarding the conference conference title race and the top team's quest towards playoff contention. How is this team handling the pressure and the possibility of a share of the title and postseason chances? Well, we we we're, we're not discussing that. All we're worried about is is winning the game and, and playing um, Delaware State. There has to be some other things that to happen um, for us to share the title. So we're just really concerned about our game, and then we'll see what happens. Well, thanks, Coach Hull. That concludes all of my questions this morning. But if I can ask you to stay on the line for any additional questions from the media. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to register a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. You'll hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. If your question has been answered and you'd like to withdraw your registration, please press the 1 followed by the 3. If you're using a speakerphone, please lift your handset before answering your request. Once again, to register a question, please press 1, 4 on your telephone keypad. And our first question comes from the line of Edward Lee of the Baltimore Sun. Please proceed with your question. Good morning, Lee. Uh, Good morning. I was just wondering, just talk about the importance of closing out the season with a win, uh, if you were able to do that on Saturday against Delaware State. Well, it, it's, it's very important to close out with a win. That's, that's what we've been talking about. We've been talking about all years finishing, you know, finishing games, um, so now we're just talking about finishing the season. You know, we, we, we have a great opportunity to um, have a winning season, which hasn't been done here you know, in, in, in a long time. So um, it, it, it's very important for a lot of reasons, you know, to have, to have a winning season, but also to send our, our seniors out, you know, on a winning note. How much of a message do you think the, the last game has in terms of, you know, setting a foundation for the next season? I think I think that was huge. It that helps us with our confidence. I think our our players are confident, um, knowing that they can play with anybody. Especially if you can be the team like South Carolina State, you know, um, you can play with you can play with anybody. 
So going into the off season, I think our guys will have a lot of confidence. Um, they'll work harder, um, and you know, through through the winter, through spring, and then in fall camp. But it it uh, does a lot for our psyche and 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 for us in the future. Um, Herb has gone the last three games without getting 100 yards. Are you noticing? Are, are defenses doing anything differently against him? Well, defense is trying to stop the run. They're they're loading the box. Um, you know, they're they're making us in our regame stuff try to pull the ball and let make the quarterback a runner. Um, you know, you know, then we're gonna have to throw the ball a little bit more. That's why we've been throwing a little bit more than we have been in the past because they are loading the box up and they're trying to stop Herb. And when you're a great running back, you know, I think he's the best running back in the in the conference. Um, you know, probably the best player in the conference, and that's what that, that's what happens. So use the use the pass to set up the run then. I, th- I think we want to be balanced. You know, in the beginning of the year we were we were heavy run, so I think mm-hmm. we just want to be balanced. So they don't know if we're running or if we're if we're throwing, and that'll just help help um, Herb. You know, with the threat of us being able to pass, um, will help her. You know, in in the run game. Delaware State, I believe, is ranked in number eight in the conference against the run. Uh, does that do you think that will help Herb on Saturday? Like again, they're they're a good football team. I'm sure they're gonna try to stop Herb, and we just have to see what they what they do. You know, we're our offense is based on um, not forcing the run or forcing the pass and and taking what they give us. So whatever they they give us, that's what we, that's what we'll do: run or pass. And Lee, you know, I I almost ask you this question every week, but uh, you know, based on what you saw from Saturday, do you feel like Moses uh, did enough to warrant being named the starter on Saturday? Yes, Moses will be the starter on Saturday. You, now that you've had a couple of days to digest what he did, what was were, were there some things that you saw from Moses that you know that he did really well, and then other things that he needs to improve on? Yeah, he you know uh, I think he has a very good command of our offense. Um, the two two interceptions um, was not was not totally his fault, but he he needs to see that the receiver fell down on on King on one, and then. Um, Marble ran the wrong route on the other one and not, not still throw it. But that that's coming from lack of experience of playing time. Um, but he he runs well enough where when we do our our our, our zone read stuff, he's able to pull it in and get us some yards um, on that to try to keep the defense honest. Um, but he has a, he has a big arm, and, and the thing that he does is he's able to throw the ball, and he has a strong arm, and he can get the ball. He can make every all the throws, so he can get the balls in, into tight spots. Lee, um, I, I noticed, uh, and I forgot to ask you this on Saturday, uh, Dominic Woods, it looked like he needed help getting off the field on the last extra point. How's he doing? Oh, he's fine. He'll, 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 he'll be ready for Saturday. Okay, so it wasn't a serious injury? No, it was not. Okay. All right, thank you, Lee. Appreciate it. All right, you're welcome. And we have no further questions at this time. Well, thanks again for joining us, Coach Hull. Best of luck to you this week and your future hopes with regards to the conference title race and playoff contention. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good. Morgan State will host Delaware State on Saturday, November 22nd. That game kicks off at 1 p.m. at Hughes Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. Next up, we have Florida a m head coach Corey Fuller. Good morning, Coach Fuller. Good morning. How are you this morning, Coach? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing well. Well, Coach, good win for the Rattlers last week. Can you talk a little bit about that matchup against Delaware State? Oh, it was a good game. Uh, you know, the Rattlers, we did play hard, and we executed a lot better than we did in the first two weeks in the job. So, you know, at this point, any, any win is a good win when you are uh, 3-8. and eight. Well, looking ahead, this week it's the Florida Classic. Can you talk about the upcoming game against Bethune-Cookman? Yeah, that's a game that uh, everybody in this part of the country that they wait on from the Rattler Nation, or from the Wildcat Nation, this is the game that they wait on. No matter what the records are, you can throw them out the door. Everybody's going to be ready for this game right here. And, um, we understand the magnitude of it and what it can do for us going into the offseason. Well, Coach, Though this game does not have any postseason or playoff implications for the Rattlers, 
Is the team motivated by the possibility of playing Sporla for the Wildcats title hopes and playoff uh, hopes? Oh, I, I think it's it's family rivalry and the full Cooper rivalry. I don't think the part about the Sporla part is really need to be there. I think that uh, we know the implement of this game on both sides. So we just look forward to the game. At the end of the day, we understand who we play and we understand it's a 365 days of the year. You know, like last week, the Delaware State game, we talked about it for two days. This is the full company of the a m game. But whoever won this game, we talked about it for a year. Well, thanks, Coach Fuller. That concludes all of my questions this morning. But if I can ask you to stay on the line for any additional questions from the media. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, to register a question on the phone, please press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. Once again, to register a question, press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. And our next question comes from the line of Ileana Limon of Orlando Sentinel. Please proceed with your question. Hi there, Coach. Uh, first question I just wanted to ask was about Damian Fleming. It, it seems like he's uh, really handled adversity well throughout his career, obviously had a huge performance this past weekend. Can you talk a little bit about what you've seen from him and, and how he's handled sort of the ups and downs of his career? Yeah, he's a very good quarterback. I um, tell a lot of jokes a lot of times dealing with our kids, but I, I told him, you know, by trade, my position was cornerback, and the kid can throw the football flat out for it and all. And through all the through all the ups and downs, he's still been consistent in what he does as a quarterback. He's still been a great leader. He comes to work every day and ready to uh, work and to try to lead the troops. And what he did last week was just show you what type of talent he has. He's 23 of 30 on a, in a weather. I know people that predict us to go up and get 41 points. Delaware State is not a bad team, but he was on his game. He's been on his game the last five weeks, to be honest. But we just really got him back to what he did coming out of high school. Put the ball in there, let him make the right read, let him get it out of his hand. How do you hope, uh, you know, he's going to be closing out his career soon. How do you hope that people remember his efforts there at FMU? Is there anything you hope that they think of when they think of Damian Fleming at this point? Oh, yeah, I want them to remember that he's an ultimate competitor. He's a kid that came to FMU with great hopes. He delivered on him. He didn't deliver as many victories as he wanted to, but he can go out with a bang this week playing against our rivalry. But the game, like I told him and I told the kids, it's not a rivalry. They won four in a row. It's not a rivalry until we win again. We keep talking about the old rivalry. we got to make the rivalry back new again. Cookman has been winning this rivalry, and we got to understand that. So I think he's up for the challenge this week. and He knows he's playing against a very good football team, and we do know that they're still trying to get into the playoffs and win the MEAC. Having seen some of Bethune Cookman at this point, is there anything that stands out about them? Anything that you all are focusing on doing against them in particular? Play football, play fast, play hard, and do what we do best. And um, what I have seen about them, they, they're well coached, they're very disciplined, they go play hard. The type of football I learned how to play when I was a player. So you know, as a coach, that's what you want to see out of a team. You want to see them playing hard, you want to see them playing fast, you want to see them playing disciplined. You want them to understand what they're doing at all times on the field and know the situation and be able to deliver in the situation. All right, Coach, with all the questions I've got, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Our next question comes from the line of Brent Warnoff of Daytona Beach News. Please proceed. Hi, Coach. A lot of my questions were already asked. But um, watching Bethune-Cookman last week and, and – maybe uh, seeing uh, their defense uh, not play as well as they had been. What, what, what did you, you learn from that game uh, to approach to approach them this week? Last week game, I, um, that was last week game. They're going to wake up this week knowing they're playing Florida and m and not Hampton. They're going to wake up this week knowing that they lost, knowing that they was right in the control of their destiny to win the MEAC. And the scope of this game is different. This is a rivalry game. You know, I went to Florida State. Uh, Miami played Florida State last week. Miami was unranked, but you couldn't tell it. So you're not going to tell that Florida and them only won three games, and Bethune Cookman know that, and we know that about them. So what they did last week has no bearing on what they, what's going to happen Saturday. And, and Fleming has been has been playing very well. What does he need to do to uh, to take advantage of of what uh, what BCU does on defense? 
I don't know. You about, you need, need to come tell us to put the game plan together. I tell you that right now. It won't, it won't do us no good to do the game plan. Cook me the Lord. What he need to do okay. is just continue to be Damon Fleming, to be honest. If he be Damon Fleming, he'll be fine. And fam, you'll be fine. He get outside of the box, do uncharacteristic things, bad things can happen. Okay, thanks, Coach. And there are no further questions at this time. Well, thanks again for joining us this morning, Coach Coach Fuller. Best of luck to you and the team this week. Thank you. Thank you. Florida and then will take on Bethune Cookman during the Florida Classic game. That game will take place on Saturday, November fifteenth at two PM and we'll broadcast live on ESPN Classic and ESPN three. Our next interview is with Bethune Cookman head coach Brian Jenkins. Good morning, Coach Jenkins. Good morning, Miss Porter. How are you this morning? Making the best of it as always. <laughs> as always. Well, Coach, not the finish you would have liked last week. Can you talk a little bit about that matchup against Hampton? Well, it's simple. It's very easy. You know, don't take a scientist to figure it out. They played better than we did. They uh, made more plays than we did. They were the most dis- more, more disciplined team than we were. And uh, they came out victorious. Bottom line is they beat us. There's no excuses on our end. Uh, you know, uh, Hampton's coach did a phenomenal job. They had a great game plan. And their kids came out hungry, more hungry than we were, and they lined up and beat our butt. And that's the bottom line. That's all the answers I got for that for that question. Well, looking ahead, this week it's the Florida Classic. Talk about this pending matchup against Florida and M. Well, everybody know what it's all about. All else don't matter. So nothing else matters. But but us and them rattlers in the ring. That's it. And and, and as simple as that. There's no no joke. It's, it's nothing to play with. We're not playing with it. We, we, we take this thing serious. We take this thing as business, and uh, we're preparing for it. And I'm sure, you know, they're preparing for it. Corey knows what it's all about. I mean, he's been at Florida State, but he's no fool. He knows he knows what this is all about, and we know what it's all about. And, and we're ready to put it all on the line and let it all hang out, and, and we're ready to get in that ring and, and do what we do. So it's going to be a, another good one, as always. It's going to be another good one. Trust me on that. It's going to be a really, really good one. Well, Coach, staying in the line of that, many are watching this conference title race this weekend that could have definite implications on how far this team will compete in postseason. With so many chips on the line, is there any added pressure for this team heading into this game? And how do you uh, manage that pressure and keep no, the players no focused? There's no pressure. I hate to cut you off. I'm sorry, Miss Porter, but there's no pressure. We're not concerned about all that other stuff. The only thing that matters is us against the Rattlers. That's it. All else will take care of itself. Our only focus, our only, our only goal, the only thing that's on our mind is preparing and lining up to play the Rattlers. That's it. That, that is it. So it's very simple to keep our team under control and keep them, you know, uh, to manage our team. There's nothing else matters. Nothing else factors in. It's a Florida classic. Everything else goes out the window. So the only thing that matters is that maroon and gold lining up against that orange and green, and that is it. Well, thanks, Coach Jenkins. That concludes all of my questions this morning, but if I can ask you to stay on the line for any additional questions from the media. Thank you, Ms. Porter. Ladies and gentlemen, to register a question, press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. Once again, to register a question, press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. Our first question comes from the line of Ileana Limon of Orlando Sentinel, please proceed. Hi there, Coach. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about how you feel your team handled adversity during the course of this season? There's been some highs and some lows for the program. Um, how do you feel your group has responded any time that you all have faced a similar challenge coming off of this uh, loss? I mean, I think we've responded very well. You know, the heart of a champion shows when uh, things have not went well or don't go well. That's when the true character of a football team comes out. And uh, I think this team has has uh, showed true character and heart of a champion. So, I mean, we've handled adversity well. We've been here before. Uh, you know, we faced this. We experienced that facing a situation like this. And, uh, you know, so the only thing we rely on is our trained behavior. And, uh, you know, I always tell my guys, and I've always stated before, you know, operate off your trained behavior. You know, your trained behavior should become instinct, and instinctively you should operate off your trained behavior. So that's what we're doing, you know, and, and – 
because of that, we've been able to survive the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, and it's a lot of things that this team has faced. I mean, a lot, a lot of things that this coaching staff has faced during the year, including myself. But uh, throughout it all, we've been able to, to rally the troops and stay behind each other and stay connected to one another and uh, just pray our way through it and find a way to counsel each other and work, work through the adversity. And, and that's what good people and, and good teams do. So, uh, you know, it hasn't been, been uh, too difficult finding a way or, or finding a solution to work through the adversity that we, we have faced. And, and I, think, I think this football team has done a pretty good job of overcoming all the things that have, have uh, came before us. Looking at, at FAMU a little bit, uh, anything stand out about them in terms of what you all need to do to be successful against them on Saturday? Well, well, the one thing, the one thing I got, I got to say is that I take my hat off to their players, you know, because when an unfortunate situation occurred, uh, you know, with Coach Holmes, those players are still playing, representing him in a very positive manner. And I tell you what, I think Coach Holmes is coming out of this situation uh, like like a shining star. You know, it's an unfortunate situation that, and I didn't agree with the way it was done. Uh, but to see Coach Holmes exit without uh, being disruptive, to see him exit with poise and pride and distinction, um, and to see him continue to encourage his players to go out and play as a team and play for one another, I think that speaks volumes about Coach Holmes. And, uh, you know, me and Coach Holmes haven't always seen eye to eye, but I give respect where respect is due. And I think the gentleman deserves a lot of respect because, uh, I mean, Evidently, he still has a grasp on that football team because they respect him well enough not to hang it up, you know. And then, you know, the guys that's working under him uh, have stepped in the gap and, and have continued to do some of the same teachings and preachings that Coach Holmes has tried to present to his team from the beginning. And because of that, I think it exemplifies, you know, uh, the kind of character those individuals have at, at, at Sam U as far as the players. And uh, I think they're, they're a group that – you know, have faced an unfortunate situation. Uh, I just wish others would have had a better thought process when it came to and thought about the players a little bit more when it came to, uh, you know, making a decision because uh, this does affect the player's career. But nevertheless, to see those players uh, continue to rally and work hard and uh, put themselves in a position to win and find a way to win a couple ball games late, I think that just shows that they're representing Coach Coach Holmes all the way to the end, and you got to give them respect for that. Thank you, Coach. One last question: um, They've got a quarterback, Damian Fleming, in particular, who seems to be a bit of a challenge, uh, dual threat athlete. Can you just talk a little bit about matching up against him in particular? Well, I mean, Damian Fleming has always been an exceptional quarterback. We've always thought that. I mean. For when I watched him play in high school, when I, you know, I always thought he was an exceptional quarterback. The day he signed with Sam, I thought Sam's uh, program was instantly elevated, you know, by bringing him on. And so, you know, it, it, you know, he's had some some injuries, but yet he still persevered through through them all. And just to show you the young man's leadership, you know, during his downtime, he continued to encourage. Uh, the other young man who had to step in and, and take all the snaps at quarterback, and he knew he had to fight back from his injuries and, and earn his keep, and, and he's done that. And that's what really good uh, uh, players do. But I think, you know, seeing the way he has handled this and seeing the way he has fought back to get himself back to the normal Damon Flint without saying – Fleming, I'm sorry, the normal Damon Fleming without saying a word just speaks volumes about his leadership and his character. And more than, than athletic skill, I think the young man brings tremendous leadership and tremendous character. And because of that, uh, you know, the result is Damian Fleming back to his own self, being a star player, and uh, elevating Sam, um, you know, in every way. Thanks a lot, Coach. And there are no further questions at this time. Well, thanks again for joining us this morning, Coach Jenkins. Best of luck to you and the team this week. Thank you, Ms. Porter. Make sure you're there. It's going to be a star-studded event in a barn burner, baby. It's the Florida Classic. Get ready. Sounds great. <laughs> but then, Cookman will take on Florida and m on Saturday, November 15th. That game kicks off at 2 p.m. at the Florida Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. The game will all 
also telecast live on ESPN Classic and ESPN3. Next up, we have Delaware State Head Coach Kermit Blunt. Good morning, Coach Blunt. Hey, good morning, Patricia. How are you? I'm doing well, Coach. How about yourself? We're hanging in there, Patricia, trying to find us another win. Sounds great, Coach. Well, let's talk a little bit about last week's matchup. Can you talk about and assess your team against the matchup against Florida and m Well, you know, uh, Sam, you came in ready to play. Uh, they got off to a, a, a jump start on us, and we couldn't rebound from it. Um, you know, when when you're um, where we are right now, the, the way we're beat up, it's just we can't afford to play from behind. And, uh, you know, certainly our kids played hard, and they played for four quarters, but uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, Sam, you just was a lot better than we were on Saturday. Um, when you look at Rutgers in this conference, you, you throw the Rutgers out of the window because, um, you know, you just never know who's going to going to show up and play and how they're going to play. Um, but, Sam, you, I give them a lot of credit. They showed up and they had a really, really good game plan, and that kids were really excited to play. Uh, we just got behind and we couldn't, couldn't rebound from it. Well, this week you face Morgan State. Can you talk about this pending game? You know, every ball game in this conference is a tough one. Coach Hall has has Morgan State playing really, really well at this point. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to go in and battle and, and, and play above our head to try to come away with a win. But we want to end the season on a positive note and try to get us a win and, and get us ready for the, uh, the next year coming. Um, you know, we're going to have to play above our head to go into uh, Baltimore and head Morgan State and get a win. Uh, but it's something that we feel that we can do. Our kids uh, uh, are still excited and motivated about playing, and, and they want to finish it off with a, with a bang. Well, Coach, this has been a tough season for the Hornets. Heading into the final game, what are your thoughts about this season, the players, and the state of the Hornets program? Well, I, I think this program is in, in, in really, really good shape. This two and, the, the two and nine record we have does not indicate the, the type of football that, uh, team that we have. Um, we've suffered a bunch of injuries this year, and, uh, you know, we make no excuses as coaches. We still want to go out and win, and, and we prepare our football team to win each week. Uh, and I take my hat off to my players. They come in every week and, and uh, study film just as if we were nine and two. And uh, they approach practice the same way. They approach each game the same way. Um, you know, we just have to just, you know, continue to get our, our team healthy and and uh, and try to build it for the future. Well, thanks, Coach Blunt. That concludes all of my questions this morning. But if I can ask you to stay on the line for any additional questions from the media. Sure. Ladies and gentlemen, to register a question, press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. Once again, to register a question, press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. And we do have a question from the line of Edward Lee of the Baltimore Sun. Please proceed with your question. Coach, I was wondering if you could just talk about the motivation for Saturday against Morgan State. Uh, they're uh, still in the, the hunt for the MEAC title. Do you look at this as a chance to play a spoiler role? Well, you know, we don't think of, of playing a spoiler. We just want to go out and get a win. And, um, you know, certainly this football team is overdue for another win. And, and um, you know, we're going to prepare our team as if we were playing for a title. And, uh, and try to go out and get a win. It, it has nothing to do with uh, upstaging uh, Morgan State at this point and their title hopes. Uh, you know, we, we, every coach in this conference coach to win. And, uh, you know, certainly we just want to try, to try to finish our season off on a positive note. What are your thoughts on Moses Skillen, the uh, junior quarterback who's just started, like, the past few games for Morgan State? Well, you know, Morgan uh, has it going right now, and, and Coach Hall has done an excellent job in, in, uh, in getting his kids ready to go. Uh, the, the quarterback um, has, has played well over the last few weeks, and uh, it's something that we have to ultimately be concerned about and being able to keep him uh, grounded and, and not let him affect us uh, uh, the way we were affected last week uh, against Sam U. Um, but uh, certainly it presents us a, a challenge, and it's a challenge that we look forward to uh, matching up with. Is, is he different from Robert Council, who started, I think, the first maybe seven or eight games, because Robert was more of a running quarterback, whereas Moses is uh, more of a thrower? Well, yeah, because, you know, anytime you have a, a young man who's an excellent passer, uh, if you give him the opportunity to, uh, to, to sit in the pocket and, and, and throw the football at you and you give him time to do it, he can hurt you. 
Uh, we're just going to have to try to keep pressure on him and, and, and get him off of his reads and, and, and make him uh, go to his second or third read or, or possibly get him out of the pocket and force him to run the football. Um, but it's, it's a tough task. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's one that we look forward to. And Coach, if you would just talk about uh, Herb Walker Jr. Uh, defenses lately have been putting you know eight guys in the box to try to stop him. Is that something you guys will try to do as well? Well, you know, we, we're going to change it up a little bit, and, and you know, we're giving some eight-man front, but at the same time, you know, we still have to play solid defense and make sure that we're not giving up anything over the top. Um, you know, we're just going to line down and play and and um, and prepare our kids the best that we can, and and just try to go in and in the Baltimore and, and walk away with a win. It's going to be a tough ball game. It's always tough playing uh, in Baltimore at at Morgan State, um, but it's something that we have to accomplish this weekend ourselves. Herb Walker is not that he's not terribly big, but what makes him so difficult as a running back? Well, you know, he, he's just one of those kids that have great skills. You know, uh, he can uh, he has a, a very very good speed, has good vision, um, the ability to make people miss, and, and we're going to have to wrap him up this weekend and, and, and get a lot of people to the football to make sure that we can rally. But he's a dangerous back, and, and we know that our kids know it, and um, you know we're just going to have to just play solid defense. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And there are no further questions at this time. Well, thanks again for joining us this morning, Coach Blunt. Best of luck to you and the team this weekend. Thanks, Patricia. We appreciate it. No problem. Delaware State will travel to Baltimore, Maryland to take on Morgan State. That game kicks off Saturday, November 22nd at 1 p.m. and will be played at Hughes Stadium. That concludes our interview with Delaware State Head Coach Kermit Blunt. Our next interview with Howard Head Coach Gary Harrell will begin promptly at 1043. Our next interview is with Howard Head Coach Gary Harrell. Good morning, Coach Harrell. Patricia Porter, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Coach. How about yourself? Doing fine, thank you. Well, Coach, good victory for the Bison last week. Talk a little bit about the win over Central Connecticut State. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely a good win for us. You know, um, unfortunately, we went in and we um, started slow, uh, fell behind by a couple of points, uh, then went in halftime and regrouped and, and, and redeclared the game to be a new beginning, uh, third quarter, 0-0, zero, zero, and come out and win the second half. Uh, they came out and performed well, um, Central Connecticut, that is. You know, their coaches did a great job as far as having their guys prepared. They made a lot of big plays in, in, the, first, in the first half, and, and we were just out of sync. And uh, we went in and made the adjustments, and you know, and we made the plays the second half. You know, we came out and got a turnover, and that kind of gave us the momentum we desperately needed to get going. And um, and Gray McGee came out and played courageous in the, in the second half. You know, right now he's the all-time <clears throat> leader for total offense in the MIAC history. Um, so you know, he's doing a great job for us. But overall, offensively, you know, the run game was there for us uh, as far as penalties. You know, it was very disciplined as far as not having um, too many penalties. And the defense came out second half and got stops. And it was a uh, good total group effort. And my head goes off to my coaching staff as far as regrouping, you know, keeping the guys focused and having them to settle down and, and, and just play bison football. Well, Coach, as you mentioned, last week Greg McGee became the conference's all-time leader in total offensive yards for a career. This feat has been something talked about all season for the Bison. Now that it has happened, what are the emotions about McGee's feat as well as your quarterback heading into his final game in a Howard Bison uniform? Uh, that's a lot of mixed emotions. You know, there's something that we uh, want a Greg McGee you know, as an individual to, to, to reach this accomplishment and he did a great job as far as setting himself up for this platform he's a great kid you know off the field he's very humble very respectful does a great job in the classroom and on the field he he plays hard you know the guy's a winner you know whatever he do you know he wants to win and you know it's great McGee is like a son to me you know we came in together you know we had conversations coming into what we wanted to take this program to to a different height and, um, and, and he's the, 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 the key ingredients for our success. And for him to buy into what we've been doing for three or four years, um, you know, I, I take my hat off to him. You know, I know it's been a rough season for him as far as wins and losses, but the guy has been 
every day uh, here studying film, uh, walking around with his head up high, you know, leading the guys, and just coming out every week prepared to play. Um, to see him, um, maybe the last time, for the last time, as far as in the Howard University uniform, you know, it's definitely going to be something that we will definitely miss. You know, he's, you know, but you know, when, I, when we talk about Gray McGee, and I tell him all the time, you know, he's he's a legend. You know, he would be a legend here at Howard University. You know, heroes. Uh, you know, those guys, they die to be remembered. The legends, you know, they, they live forever. And Gray McGee will always be uh, a, a legend around here at Howard University. So, I mean, he, he deserves it. He earned it. Um, but we want to make sure now that he continue to get better. His last game at Howard University uh, against Hampton. And, you know, he's closing in on a 10,000-yard mark. So he still has something to shoot for. And knowing Gray McGee, he's going to keep climbing that ladder to reach new heights. Well, as you mentioned, this week you take on Hampton for Senior Day. Can you talk about the pending matchup? Uh, it's definitely going to be a tough one. You know, they, they did a great job. Coach, Coach Manning and the staff did a great job as far as uh, playing very tough, playing very disciplined, making plays against the nationally ranked team, Bethune Cookman. Um, they did a great job as far as having their guys focused, motivated. You know, uh, it was, uh, I think it was Senior Day for those guys, and they want to make sure that they send their seniors off on a on a good note, and, and, they, and they did that. So my hat goes off to them. Uh, they have a great young quarterback. Terrell does a great job as far as, you know, making plays for them. Uh, they have a great skilled guys that make plays uh, as far as Rashad. You know, defense, they play hard. They play hard, and they're very disruptive. And, and it's going to be a great matchup. Anytime it's Hampton and Howard, uh, you know, it's just like a Bethune FAMU or, you know, it's like a Miami Hurricane Florida State. You know, we'll, we'll consider rivals and, and the kids and the coaches, the alumni. You know, everyone wants to win. Everybody wants to be successful and get that bragging right. And, and we're going to have our guys prepared. I'm sure Coach Man is going to have his guys well prepared also. And, you know, we're going to leave it on the field. We're going to let the game decide. And, and we go from there. But, you know, we'll, we'll come. You know, guys will be motivated. You know, the good thing about uh, this upcoming game, we'll come up a win. And they're coming up a big win also. So both teams should be. Very excited about what's going on. You know, wins always increase confidence. It makes you feel good about yourself. And you just never know what can happen. But I'm just glad now we're winning and we have the momentum. And the guys here at Howard are starting to believe in themselves. And all the adversity we've been through with the injuries. But, you know, right now we have a system called plug and play. You know, we plug in the next guy and we continue to move on. Well, thanks, Coach Harrell. That concludes all of my questions this morning. But if I can ask you to stay on the line for any additional questions from the media. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to register a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. Once again, to register a question over the phone, please press 1-4. Our next question comes from the line of Trevin Jones of Howard University Sports. Please proceed. Coach Harrell, good morning, sir, and congratulations on the win this past weekend. How are you doing? Thank, thank you. Good morning to you. Doing good. Uh, real quick, Coach, I like that plug-and-play system that you just talked about. Did you come up with that this season because of all the injuries that you had to uh, endure throughout the season, or is that something you always had in your pocket? Uh, that's something that I came up with, you know, midway through the season. Uh, we just had so many guys go down, and uh, you know, but you got to go with the guys that's available to you. And we reached back and pulled the next guy up, and we have to make sure they're coached up just like the first guy. But, uh, you know, we've been in this situation before. Um, before we always say next man up, but for some reason that that phrase kind of stuck with me. Um, you know, just plug a guy here and go. We had to move guys at different position, uh, so we had to plug some holes. You know, and I get, I think it kind of hit me, like I said, halfway through the season. Uh, you know, we were a team, we we're a program that don't like to make excuses. Um, so that mm -hmm. plug and play is very um, instrumental as far as what we're trying to do. Right. And now this game against Hampton coaches, it's a different Hampton team that started out the season. I'm quite sure you're well aware of that. Um, yes. What kind of challenges do you see um, them posing to you this weekend um, as a result of their growth throughout the season? Well, you know, the, the Hampton's a tough team. They they, uh, they make a lot of big plays, you know, with, with their quarterback, and, and we, we understand that. We uh, They do a lot of good things on offense as far as the misdirections. They, they, they have a, really, a very good scheme. And it makes you prepare more for the type of offense that they're running. Um, but they have the athletes 
to do what they're trying to get done also on the outside on the perimeter. Uh, but they can hurt you on offense and on defense. Uh, they really get after you. Uh, so it's going to definitely be a tough matchup for us. Uh, like you said, it's a different team. They came out, and when you watched them early in the year, uh, they, I guess ODU, I mean, they played well early in the year. And, you know, and then something happened maybe towards the middle. But I think now that they're finding themselves, I think they probably realize what they're able to do as far as on offense and some things they're able to do on defense. And, and you have to give the coaching staff credit for that to, to find what, out what works and implement it to the kids and to the system and to have success. So anytime those things are happening, that tells you that the coaching staff uh, are doing a great job, you know, coaching the kids. The kids are doing a good job of still believing, buying into what's, what they're been taught to do. And it's showing on the football field. You know, they're, they're, they're disciplined. You know, they play hard. Um, I mean, this conference is, is, is a tough conference, you know. As you can see, at any time, you know, you see what happened with Hampton and Bethune. You see what happened uh, with Morgan and South Carolina State. Uh, so this conference, man, is, is going in the right direction. Those are things you want to see happen. You want to see different teams be successful week in and week out to make it very interesting um, to the fans. Right. Hey, Coach, um, Antoine, the, uh, the quarterback, he's a freshman, uh, due for 249 yards last week, had five touchdowns. Now, you coming off the game against San Giacomo last week, San Giacomo last week, it was yeah. more like a pocket passer. Now yeah. you're facing Antoine this week. What kind of a challenge is that posing for, for the Bison? Um, you know, I think in this conference, you know, we have, we have a lot of quarterbacks. And, and, uh, I mean, Jarrell is a very good athletic young quarterback. and does a lot of good things with his arms and with his legs. Um, but we, we've been faced with this type of quarterback in this conference. When you look at um, uh, the quarterback at Morgan, I mean, we got some good quarterbacks in this conference. And, um, you know, last week we faced a guy that was a stand-up tall guy in the pocket. And so we had to make some adjustments as far as, you know, get him off his spot and make him move a little. Um, so, of course, this week is going to be different uh, as far as how we attack um, Jarrell. You know, we're going to see, you know, what, what he can do as far as with some pressure and, and some disguise in, in the secondary. And, and we'll go from there. But we'll make sure our guys is disciplined. You know, that's going to be the key that we're disciplined and that we play sound football and carry out our assignments uh, because we can't make any mistakes. You know, I guess a team like Hampton, if, if, if one – or two people's out of place, they they will make they will make you uh, pay for it, and they will make you pay big. They have some big plays throughout the year, you know, not just at the quarterback position, but at the running back mm-hmm. position also. You know, they have some guys that can, you know, go the distance. You know, as far as Christopher Dukes, he he can go the distance, but you know, mm-hmm. I think that the guy Rashad uh, Riddick is a very very good athlete. Uh, he's 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 one of those tough throwback players. He just makes the plays. If it's a 50-50 ball, you know, that guy, he really attacks the ball. You know, playing a wide receiver position myself, you can see that in him. He's an athlete that can move around and make plays. Okay. So, Coach, and now uh, getting specifically to the uh, to the game again, what makes this rivalry so special and the fact that you get to have it at home this season? Uh, you know, it's, it's always special every year, you know, for us. And I'm sure it's the same for them, you know. I as a player here, I never had the opportunity to appreciate um, what we have today because, you know, Hampton was not in the MEAC, so we didn't have that uh, that rivalry with Hampton as far as when it came to athletics, you know, academic. Uh, you know, now, you know, both universities are, are, are doing well when it comes to academics, and uh, we believe in academics, and they do a good job as far as preaching the same thing. Uh, but now, you know, back then it was A&T. You know, A&T was the team that we faced and we went back and forth with, but now you know it's, it's Hampton, and you know, and when you go back a couple of years, more than a couple of years, maybe 10, 15 years, you know, Hampton was dominant. You know, they dominated the rivalry, and, and I always believe it's not a rivalry until you go back and forth. And, and coming into the program, I wanted to make it a real rivalry, so that's why it was important for me to come in and, and set the tone, and and really get the guys to believe that this is how universal and, and I know it's the battle of the real HU but I don't try to defend that title I just believe that we're how universal and, and I believe that we do a great job as far as what we do with our, our, our individuals our, our students on the academic side as well as athletics 
and we want to make sure that we go out and represent in the right way. And, and to go out and have some success uh, against Hampton in the past three or four years, you know, now the rivalry is a rivalry, and I'm pretty sure they want to win a game desperately, and we definitely want to win the game desperately. And it's just not football; it's basketball. You know, it's volleyball. Um, so this 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 rivalry goes deep uh, throughout the campus. You know, here in Washington D.C., I'm sure also in, in, in Virginia. But uh, you know, it gives you a chance to have that bragging right for 365 days, and and, and we enjoyed it for the past three years. It feels good, and we want to make sure that our guys understand what they're playing for. This is about pride. You know, this is about tradition uh, outside of sports. You know, it's about winning. You know, Howard University, we try to teach our student athletes to be winners in the classroom, in society, in corporation. So we want to teach our guys the same thing on the football field, and hopefully it carries over when they leave and when they go to these different corporations, when they go in the classroom, in society. Right. Right, thanks, Coach. Um, my last question, um, Coach. I, I noticed you had. I, I know you had to notice this during the season. Um, after the games, uh, coaches and players have come up to Greg and had conversations with Greg. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, after the game has been completed, I've actually witnessed four players waiting for Greg to come out of the locker room. I think it was in Savannah where yeah. they waited for him when he came out, and Greg was very cordial and courteous, and he stood there and he talked to them for about ten minutes, um, and then he was, that was followed by a coach. Uh, we know success on the field, uh, but after having him for four years, what is it about him that makes him so special? Not only for as a Howard football player, but as an ambassador for the MEAC and HBCU. Um, you know, I, I really don't have an answer for that. I mean, it just it's Gray McGee. He's he's just a special guy. It's hard to find individuals um, that can do what he do. You know, perform well on up the football field. Um, do not get any trouble that, that's detrimental to the team, to the university, and, and just goes out every week and plays lights out. Uh, you know, he, he's a special kid. I think coming in to Howard University, being in the starting role from day one, being the guy, and when we recruited Greg McGee, we kind of told him that we're giving you number seven for a reason. Everyone that wore the seven was special. So I think by giving him uh, the platform and giving him goals and giving him visions what to shoot for, I think it kind of helped him out to, to, to where he is today. I think this campus – I think this university um, did a good job as far as molding him, supporting him, and, and he really loves Howard University. He wants to win for the university. And I think those things, uh, when you consider all those things, it helps him prepare for a game. It helps him get motivated for, for a game. But an you know, I, 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 individual like Greg McGee, I mean, you got to go back to his parents. you got to look at his background. You know, if he's performing this well in this type of adversity, when he's displaying that type of character, you got to go back to his background and see what a good job his parents did with him. Right. And coach, my last question: You being a former wideout for well, at HU, and then after that as well, would you have loved to have the opportunity to be at the other end of these passes that Greg is, is throwing, and with Greg reaching that ten thousand yard mark? What does that mean to you as a coach looking down at this, at this young man that you brought in? Uh, it does a lot. You know, you want to be a part of it. You know, I had a great quarterback, Jay Walker, so I had, you know, similar uh, opportunities and similar experiences that some of these wide receivers are going through. You know, we, we had some good times back then and, and from 1992 to 94 when Jay Walker hit the campus. You know, we, have, we had a very high uh, potent offense, and we put up a lot of points. But Gray McGee, you know, he, he throws a, some nice balls. It, it comes off very well. They're very catchable. You know, they're very – always in a position where you can catch and run with it. Uh, but just playing, you know, outside of, you know, what he can do uh, physically, just, you know, just his accuracy, his smarts as far as understanding the game, just to, to line up with them and knowing he's going to be a soldier, that he's going to give his very best. I think that's, well, that, that makes it more important for me as a, as a teammate. When you see your guy, Gray McGee, sometimes goes out and gets beat up. You know, when you go back to his freshman year, this guy got – uh, just just banged up, you know, throughout throughout the week because he wasn't really ready for college football, but he has grown. And when you see him from his freshman year to now, as far as him understanding the game, you know, when to take off, when to, you know, throw the ball away, he, he's a very smart quarterback. And I just hope that we're able to see it continue on the next level. I just hope he get the opportunity to display 
what we have installed here at Howard University. Thanks a lot, Coach, and uh, good luck this weekend. Hey, thank you, Trevor. And there are no further questions at this time. Well, thanks again for joining us this morning, Coach Harold. Best of luck to you and the team this week. Thank you, Ms. Porter. Howard University will host Hampton University on Saturday, November 22nd. The game kicks off at 1 p.m. at Green Stadium in Washington, D.C. Our next interview is with Norfolk State head coach Pete Adrian. Good morning, Coach Adrian. Good morning, Patricia. How are we doing today? Doing well, Coach. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. Well, Coach, competitive matchup last week, but not the win. Talk about the game against North Carolina Central. Well, you know, it was, it was a very physical game, went back and forth, and again, we had a chance to win it at the end of the ball game, first down at the eight-yard line, and four shots uh, in the end zone, and didn't get it in, and, you know, the game over. I mean, we played uh, real solid football uh, on the defensive side of the ball, obviously, and, and uh, you know, they're a good football team. <laughs> they did a nice job. Uh, they had a nice game plan. They played well, and, uh, you know, a tough one to lose again, but we that's been our whole season has been like that. Well, Coach, that goes right into my next question. Heading into this final game, what are your thoughts about this season, the players, and the state of the Spartans football program? Well, the kids have played really hard. I mean, the kids have, have done everything we've asked them to do, and, they, and uh, they've been ready to play every ball game. And really, that's all you can ask from the players. They're doing a, really uh, a good job. And, you know, they're knowing that the defense has played uh, very well, and the offense is trying to grow, and a lot of young kids playing for them. But, uh, you know, we've got to make some plays. Uh, to win games at certain times, and we really just haven't been able to do it. We've been close, but not not good enough. Well, looking ahead, this week it's another tough battle as you take on South Carolina State. Can you talk about the spending game? Oh, yeah. I mean, South Carolina State is their typical South Carolina State team. I mean, you know, they're really outstanding on defense. They really play hard. They put you a lot and got a lot of pressure with the guys up front. and got I got some real good defense alignment in there. And then, you know, offensively, they're doing what they like to do, trying to run your quarterback fire and all your different uh, misdirections out of there with their counters and, and whatnot, and then try to throw the ball deep on you on play action pass. And, you know, it's, it's a stuff area where we've played long enough that it's going to be got to go out and just execute and do what you got to do. Well, thanks, Coach Adrian. That concludes all of my questions this morning. But if I can ask you to stay on the line for any additional questions from the media. You bet. Ladies and gentlemen, to register a question, press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. Once again, to register a question, press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. Okay, and our first question comes from the line of Brantley Strickland of the Orangeburg Times and Democrat. Please proceed with your question. Hey, Coach. Um, I, I know you talked a little bit about the defense. Um, I know y'all are teams that have kind of had some similar issues with the offense struggling and defense playing well. I guess, do you see any similarities between your two teams in that regard? Well, I mean, you know, they, they've done better offensively than we have. I mean, they've had a couple of games where they've blown some people out and scored a lot of points. You know, we we haven't done that yet. And, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, so I think they're probably a step ahead of us from that standpoint. Defenses are probably pretty similar. Okay. And uh, I guess maybe would – would you see a, a low-scoring kind of game Saturday then? Well, you know, for us to win, I think it has to be, you know, from that standpoint. And so uh, hopefully it is. I, you know, we're not going to get in a scoring battle. Uh, uh, I don't think we can compete with that. All right. That's all I got. Okay. And there are no further questions at this time. Well, thanks again for joining us this morning, Coach Adrian. Best of luck to you and the team this week. Okay, Patricia, and thank you for everything. And I do want to say one thing that I'm very proud of. We have 18 seniors graduating in December. Awesome. Thank so you so a, much for uh, that announcement. That's our all-time record since I've been here. So that's, that's, a, that's a big thing that we're very proud of. Thank you for sharing, Coach, and congratulations to all of those student athletes. Okay, thank you. Have a good day. You too. Norfolk State will travel to Orangeburg, South Carolina, to take on South Carolina State. That game kicks off Saturday, November 22nd at 1.30 p.m., and will be played at the Oliver C. Dawson Stadium. Next up, we have Hampton University head coach Connell Maynard. Good morning, Coach Maynard. Good morning, Patricia. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Coach. How about yourself? 
I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Hanging in there. No problem. Well, Coach, pretty good win last week over Bethune-Cookman. Can you talk about that, that victory? Yes, uh, that was a very good win for the program, uh, for our kids and uh, our alumni. You know, it was a nationally televised game and, uh, you know, against a nationally ranked team. Uh, they was ranked in two different polls. Uh, they was tied for first in the conference, two-time defending champs, won three out of the last four. So uh, we knew they was going to come to play. Uh, we know what tight team that is, uh, well coached, um, and got some great athletes over there. And, uh, you know, it was senior night for us, and, uh, you know, our guys uh, going to send the seniors out right, and, uh, you know, they fought they fought for 60 minutes against uh, one of the best teams in the nation in our conference and, and was able to come out with a win against a very, very good football team and a very well-coached football team. Well, Coach, another competitive matchup sets itself up this week as you travel to Howard University. Can you talk about the game? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, Coach O'Reilly is doing a great job down there. Uh, they, you know, they won three in a row. Uh, they kind of found a uh, groove and now senior night for those guys. And so, uh, you know, they want to send uh, their seniors out on a win and, and end the season on a four-game winning streak. And so they got a lot to play for. And it's a home game. And then it's uh, Howard versus Hampton, which, you know, you don't need a lot of extra motivation for that game. And uh, they seem to have a lot. Uh, so we know that they're going to be re very well coached and be prepared to play uh, 60 minutes, and, uh, you know, we look forward to the challenge of going down there and uh, competing against those guys uh, in this in this rivalry. It's a, it's a big-time rivalry, um, the battle of the HUs, and, you know, I don't think it's a real HU. I think both of us are real HUs. They just happen to be Howard, and we happen to be Ham Hampton, you know. Uh, so uh, it, it's another football game. It's the biggest game because our next football game, and uh, we're going to go down to Washington and uh, compete for four quarters and see if we can't come out with a W. Well, Coach, heading into this last matchup of the season, you have seen many ups and downs for this team. What is your outlook for this overall team this season heading into the postseason with regards to recruiting and, of course, year two for you as head coach of this program? Well, these guys, uh, you know, the seniors, these guys, and uh, they never quit. Uh, they've been competing uh, um, every game. You know, they, they, they've they done what we asked them to do. They go out and compete. You know, we just uh, wasn't quite ready to win and uh, weren't used to it enough to where we could make plays late in the football games. Uh, but, you know, they, they, they it wasn't because of the effort. You know, the effort was there. The guys was trying. Uh, so we just got to continue to uh, stay in games, and the more games you're in closer, the way you, that's how you figure out how to win the games. And, you know, we got to teach these guys how to win and finish, and, and we'll be fine. Uh you know, I'm proud of these guys so far of what they've done. And, you know, they've been competitive, you know, and that's all you can ask for is those guys to compete and be competitive, have a chance to win games. And, and we have had a chance to win just about every game that we play. So uh, I'm proud of those guys from that aspect. Uh, and now we just got to grow on it. You know, we got to take it and finish out this year strong with a with a W this week. And uh, and we end the season at 4-8 if, if we can do that, the same record we had last year. Now we got to start – uh, expanding on that and, and uh, winning more games, and uh, and I, I think that's the that's the road that we're headed down and trying to get to winning more games, competing for the MEAC, and uh, and uh, getting the playoffs and get some playoff wins and and eventually play for a national championship. Well, thanks, Coach Maynard. That concludes all of my questions this morning. But if I can ask you to stay on the line for any additional questions from the media. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, to register a question over the phone, please press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. And our next question comes from the line of Trevin Jones of Howard University Sports. Please proceed. Coach Connell Maynard, how are you doing, sir? It's been a minute. Glad to hear from you and see you doing so well at Hampton. Um, how are you making out? Uh, I'm making out all right. Thank you. Uh, uh, hanging in there, you know, we got, a, we got a big win last week, so we need to uh, keep the momentum going. Right, and that's perfect because that was my next question is going to be, coming off that big win, you know, how do you evaluate your team coming into this, the last game? Well, we just got to continue to do what we did last week. You know, we got to go out and play every play, one play at a time, for one quarter, for one half, for one game, and uh, continue to compete. Uh, you know, I'm going to tell my guys it's another senior day because it is. It's our seniors' last game. Uh, last week was their last home game, but this week is their last game. So 
uh, for us and Howard. It's going to be another senior day. Uh, and so, um, you know, let's send these seniors out right and uh, let's go out and compete for four quarters and uh, and look up at the school board in the end of four quarters and, and see who's ahead. Right. Now, this is your first time going up against uh, Howard as a head coach. Um, anything different about that, that you would uh, bring into this game with the Pirates as you prepare for this game? No, you know, you don't need a lot of uh, – uh, motivation and speeches and things of that nature for this game. This mm-hmm. is a big rivalry. Uh, you know, they, they've gotten the best of us here for like last three or four years, so we need to try to do something about that and, and get the bragging rights back up here in Virginia. Uh, but, you know, it's Howard and uh, it's Hampton. You know, it's, it's always been a big game uh, uh, since uh, we came into the uh, NEAC. You know, uh, you right. know, like uh, Coach Arell said, you know, we was uh, – when I was at A&T, Howard was one of our big rivalries, you know. And so now Howard is still one of my big rivalries. So I, I've been in that Howard A&T game when it was a big rivalry. It was always on, like, a homecoming, or if it wasn't, it, it was packed like homecoming at both places. And so uh, that's the type of atmosphere we expect again uh, this week. Okay. And, Coach, um, having played the position of quarterback yourself, um, and now you're facing um, Greg McGee for the first time as a coach. I know you've seen him on tape probably throughout the season. What are some of the early observations you've seen with Greg, and what problems is he going to pose for your Pirates? Oh, man, he's a dual-threat quarterback. You know, he's uh, he was preseason picked to be, uh, you know, the player of the year. And, uh, you know, because he can hurt you with his arm, and he can hurt you with his legs, and uh, he can hurt you with his brain because he's smart. He understands the game, and uh, I'm pretty sure he can. He's been getting them in and out of some plays that they want. They didn't want to be in because of his experience, and uh, and so you know when you when you face a player like that, you got to try to contain them. You can't stop great players. Uh, you can only try to contain them and slow them down. And uh, basically, sometimes you know you just got to hope he missed throws or uh, and things of that nature because you know when you got great players, uh, you know they're great for a reason. You know they can make all the throws and. They understand the game, so sometimes you know you got to have somebody open. And he, we just got to hope he miss them, you know, or he missed the read. Uh, other than that, you know, it's, it's hard to stop great players. All right, coach. Thank you for your time. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. And there are no further questions at this time. Well, thanks again for joining us this morning, Coach Maynard. Best of luck to you and the team this week. All right, thank you, Patricia. Hampton University will travel to Washington, D.C. to take on Howard University. Their game kicks off Saturday, November 22nd at 1 p.m. and will be played at Green Stadium. Our next interview is with Savannah State Head Coach Ernest. Good morning, Coach Wilson. Good morning, Patricia. How are you this morning, Coach? I'm doing well. Can you, can you assess your team's performance in the matchup against North Carolina A&T? Well, we came out and, uh, you know, I thought the boys played decent. Uh, we're still trying to get there. Uh, at halftime, it was 10 to nothing. And, uh, you know, we felt pretty good. We moved the ball up and down the field. We, uh, we got shot ourselves in the foot any time. Uh, but, you know, that's part of a, a thing when you're young and, and still growing. And I know that shouldn't be an excuse at this time of the year, but, uh, you know, we, we just got to get better at what we do. But hats off to coach. Well, looking ahead, this week it's a not a non-conference matchup as you take on Brigham Young. Talk about the upcoming game. Well, it's going to be a tough one. You know, we're not, you know, we're not going to pull any punches. They've just been allowed to. Uh, they're going to a bowl game. They've already accepted a bid to a bowl. Uh, they're big. They're tough. They're, they're, our average age is probably about 18. Uh, their average age is about 23 or 24. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have to go in there and we're going to have to fight it out, but we're not going to we're gonna hope to represent the MEAC and, uh, you know, hold the score down and at the same time make plays for ourselves. Well, Coach, now that we're heading into this final game of the season, how do you sum up this year's Tigers football team and the overall season? Well, you know, this is definitely an eye-opener. I've been on the job for about 16 months, even though this is my second second season. I haven't been on the job for two years. But I do realize there's some things that we got to get done here at Savannah State. I thought we had a great recruiting year. Uh, most of our freshmen produced. Uh, they were the most productive part of our program, so we were excited about that. So we got to just keep them academically going right. 
and working towards your college degree. And uh, I know Coach talked about his uh, 18 kids graduating at Norfolk, and that adds off to him because that's what we hear. Uh, but, you know, we our freshmen produced, our sophomores produced, uh, you know, uh, we sent our seniors, we're sending our seniors out, but we guys got to continue to get good, better players. And as we get better players, we got to improve our facilities. And I, I realize, you know, you try to do things without a, 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 a real solid weight room or a, real, or a classroom setting, and it's really tough to get it done. But I think that we can, and are we on the hunt to try to either – uh, get our alumni to build that type of stuff or else, uh, you know, find some place around campus where we can meet and, and, and have classes and whatnot so we can teach football. And I think with all that getting done, I think that we're going to be very successful here at Savannah State University. Well, thanks, Coach Wilson. That concludes all of my questions this morning, but if I can ask you to stay on the line for any additional questions from the media. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, to register a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. Once again, to register a question, 1, 4 on your telephone keypad. And there are no questions at this time. Well, thanks again for joining us this morning, Coach Wilson. Best of luck to you and the team and safe travels this week. Uh, thank you, and have a blessed week. Thank you, you too. Savannah State will take on Brigham Young on Saturday, November 22nd. The game kicks off at 1 p.m. and will be played at Lavelle Edwards Stadium in Provo, Utah. That concludes our interview with Savannah State Head Coach Ernest Wilson. Our next interview with South Carolina State Head Coach Buddy Pugh will begin promptly at 11.23. Our next interview is with South Carolina State Head Coach Buddy Pugh. Good morning, Coach Pugh. Good morning, Patricia. How are you? I'm doing well, Coach. How are you? Uh, not good, not good. Well, Coach, tough finish last week for the Bulldogs. Can you share your thoughts with regards to that matchup against Morgan State? Well, um, went up and played, we went up and played uh, Morgan uh, this past Saturday in Baltimore. And uh, Coach Hull and his outfit did a nice job of uh, putting together a plan to beat us. And, uh, you know, I wish I could say that. Uh, it shouldn't have been and that kind of stuff, but it, it, it was, and they deserved it. Uh, I thought they did a nice job of of designing the attack and staying in the ball game and just kind of hang around to, to the very end, and they got a chance to you know, to win the game at the end, and they took advantage of that particular opportunity. So uh, it was a good win for them. Uh, I want to congratulate them and, uh, and uh, you know, and all of what they've accomplished this, this year, and uh, we move on. Well, moving on, Coach, this week it's another competitive matchup as you take on Norfolk State. Can you share your thoughts on this matchup? Uh, more of the same. I watched, I watched uh, Norfolk's game on tape, and, uh, you know, I had to keep looking back to see if I was looking at our game because it almost looked like the exact same game. And, you know, between the two of us, I think we are the, <laughs> it's like we were playing in a tournament and we were, we were the elimination game. Uh, Norfolk and South Carolina State both lost at the very end, and uh, Norfolk actually has an opportunity to win at the end of their game. Uh, it's kind of similar to the way that uh, uh, Morgan won against us, and uh, you know it's what it is now. Uh, we both uh, uh, are here uh, trying to finish out the season, and uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, we are both coming and play well. Well, coach. The door has opened for many options and chances for teams to share the conference title and get an opportunity to play in the postseason. Though not needed, how is this team handling not being in control of its fate and battling for the opportunity to compete in the playoffs? And does not it add good, any not, additional yeah. motivation? Yeah, well, it doesn't add any motivation, I guarantee you. You know, when you think you've, 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 you've got a chance to – you know, control your own destiny, and you blow it that way. Uh, you know, you don't necessarily follow through and uh, and get it done. Then, you know, from that point on, you know, there is a vacuum of sorts uh, that you're trying to find, uh, you know, your way uh, through because of the fact that, you know, you had this, you had all this hope there, and, you know, it's kind of gone away. But uh, uh, we do have a chance, and that's one of the things that we've, uh, uh, we've tried to use this week as uh, – you know, as motivation, uh, as inspiration uh, for going out and playing well this week. Besides the fact that this is our last home game 
and uh, and we got a nice group of seniors who've done a lot for this program that we want to make sure that we do a nice job of sending out into the world. Uh, so uh, you know, we've got our work cut out for us, but at the same time, uh, it is tough playing this week after having lost uh, what we felt like was our, was our main opportunity this past weekend. Well, thanks, Coach Pugh. That concludes all of my questions this morning, but if I can ask you to stand on line for any additional questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, to register a question, press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. Once again, to register a question over the phone, please press 1-4. Okay, we do have a follow question from the line of Brant Lee Strickland of Orangeburg Times and Democrat. Please proceed. Coach, good morning. Uh, just, a, just a couple things here. Uh, talking to Coach Adrian this morning, he, um, he was pretty complimentary of uh, South Carolina State's offense. Um, I guess do you, uh, you maybe see those things being warranted right now? <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, you know, I don't know what the hell he's looking at. <laughs> but now I can tell you that he does. He definitely has the best defense in the league. And uh, you know, the guy, you know, that number seven guy, you know, that he's got out there is special. I mean, is really special. He's, you know, being from South Carolina, you can imagine the kind of comparisons that I draw. You know, with this guy, but. Uh, uh, you know, Coach Adrian's done a fantastic job over the years of uh, of always coming in here and competing against us, and you know I'm sure it'll be no different this year. Um, he's uh, <clears throat> he's uh, uh, had a little bit of uh, offensive issues himself, and uh, you know I'm sure we share you know that particular pain uh, in a way that you know we wish neither one of us did, but at the same time, uh, both our defenses have played considerably better than our offenses. And uh, I think that makes this game pretty comparable that way. Yes, um, I mean, would you have a low score in defensive game playing out? You have to bet on it? Well, you know, that would seem to be the way it would play out. You know, I'm hoping that if, if, if either offense has happened to get going, I hope it's ours, because if either offense gets any kind of lead, any kind of surmountable lead especially, you know, then you, you, you would think that the other team would be in trouble. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you do think that it, you you would think that this game would be you know a low scoring kind of defensive slugfest kind of deal. All right, and uh, and last question here. I, I was looking over your your depth chart from this week to last week, and I, it seems like uh, you made a change at, at left tackle and tight end. I guess uh, talk about that. Well, um, Tamaric Hemingway uh, was out last week with a concussion, and uh, you know that kind of threw our whole uh, offensive deal out of whack a little bit. So we started moving some guys around that way. Uh, Lehman and those guys, Eric Dickerson, the guys that we've been trying. That offensive line group has been kind of a mystery to us all year. We keep moving those guys around, you know, trying to get us and trying to build some continuity. And then, you know, that's almost, you know, and, and you know, a, well, uh, a conundrum of sorts in itself. Uh, you don't necessarily try to find, you know, new alignments to build continuity. You know, maybe at some point or other we need to settle in and just try to stick with some guys. But, you know, we have moved those guys around a good bit, and that's been a source of concern. All right. That's all I got, Coach. All right, Brantley. There are no further questions at this time. Well, thanks again for joining us this morning, Coach Pugh. Best of luck to you and the team this week. Thank you very much, Patricia. Our next interview is with North Carolina a and head coach Rod Broadway. Good morning, Coach Broadway. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well, Coach. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Well, Coach, as you would say, all wins are good wins. So last week, another good win over Savannah State. Can you talk about your team's performance? Of course. It was, it was a good win, and, you know, it was a big win for us, uh, getting to 9-2 and two and no, I don't think we played very well, but uh, we won the ball game, uh, especially in the first half. And you, know, you have to give Savannah some credit for coming out and taking the ball away from us. We had three turnovers in the first quarter. They had the ball for 12 minutes in the first quarter, and you know that's not how we like to play around here. So we've got to get better and protect the football and uh, be a lot better this week than last week. Well, speaking of this week, this week you will face North Carolina Central in the final game of the season. Can you talk about the matchup? Yeah, I think it's going to be a good matchup. They they have a good football team, well coached, good in kicking game. 
good offensive team, good uh, defensive team. I think they've done a good job down there. And, you know, you can watch tape. They play hard. And those are ingredients for a good football team. And, you know, and uh, it's going to be a challenge going down there and competing. Uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere, but it's one we're looking forward to. Do, uh, we're looking forward to it. Well, Coach, a lot is being said about the conference title race and playoff hopes. Last week, you said that that was not in your conversation, and that you were heading into the last week's game, looking at that particular game. But with the scenario so clear, you win and you're in. Has the discussion changed this week? Of course, uh, you know. I, I, Priority is still the same, which is to win the ball game and to focus on the ball game, and not be distracted by outside stuff that you can't control. But uh, if we win, we're champions. This is as simple as that, and we're going to go down and try to win the ball game because we want to be champions, and uh, we don't want to share it, and we don't want to divide it. We want to own it ourselves. So that's the, that's our approach this week, and we're going to go down and hopefully play the best game we played this year. Well, thanks, Coach Broadway. That concludes all of my questions this morning, but if I can ask you to stay on the line for any additional questions from the media. Ladies and gentlemen, to register a question, please press the 1 followed by the 4 on your telephone. Once again, to register a question, please press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. And there are no questions at this time. Well, thanks again for joining us this morning, Coach Broadway. Best of luck to you and the team this week. Thank you, Patricia. Have a good day. You too. North Carolina a and will take on North Carolina Central in its next game. That game kicks off Saturday, November 22nd at 2 p.m. and will be played at the O'Kelly Riddick Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. Our next interview is with North Carolina Central head coach Jerry Mack. Good morning, Coach Mack. Good morning, Patricia. How are you this morning? Doing well. How about you? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Coach, another strong showing for the Eagles last week as you de defeated Norfolk State. Can you talk about your team's performance in the win? Uh, just a great effort by our defense and special teams. Uh, it wasn't pretty offensively, but uh, we managed enough yards and points to, to get the job done. Uh, I thought all phases of our football team, you know, they just refused to lose on Saturday. Uh, defense came up with some great turnovers and some good stops when we needed it. And our special team provided a spark at the end to have a game-winning touchdown. Well, Coach, there's been a lot of ups and a few downs for this team this season, but now heading into the final game of the season, how do you see your first year as head coach of North Carolina Central? Well, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's been, like you said, it's been a lot of ups and downs in this first season. Uh, just extremely proud of the young men and been able to overcome a lot of adversity. Uh, you know, we, we showed on Saturday we know we knew how to close the football game. That's one thing we've been preaching all year. We've been having troubles with that. But uh, we, it finally all came together on Saturday. Uh, you know, overall, you know, these seniors that we got on this football team, they, they've been through about three uh, coaches here in their, in their tenure. And uh, just for them to buy into our vision and to put ourselves in a position this last game to compete for a part of a championship is just something that I would love to send those guys out on top with. Well, looking ahead, as you mentioned, this week you will face North Carolina A&T in a game that has much more meaning this year than not just a victory or local bragging rights, but could have implications on the conference title race. How do you see this game, and you can, can you talk about this pending matchup? Uh, extremely uh, talented football team in North Carolina A&T. Uh, very fundamental sound football team on all phases of, of, their, uh, of their game. Uh, we just got to do a great job as our football team, you know, executing and doing what we have to take take control of. Uh, that means not turning the ball over, not committing a, a lot of penalties that forces us to be behind the chains and, and put us in a situation where we can't get off the field. Uh, you know, and, and like you said, it's a rival game. You know, uh, everything's on the table for this game. They're trying to be outright champions. We're trying to get a piece of a championship. So, uh, you know, you know the emotions are going to be high, and, and, and you know, everybody's going to pretty much come to play, I feel like. Well, thanks, Coach Mack. That concludes all of my questions this morning, but if I can ask you to stay on the line for any additional questions from the media. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, to register a question, please press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. Once again, to register a question, press 1-4 on your telephone keypad. And our first question comes from the line of Lute Williams of Black College Sports Page. Please proceed. Coach Mack, congratulations on the win in the season you've had so far. Can you talk about uh, what went into the decision to play Bellerman last week, and if, uh, if you're willing to 
to talk about the uh, uh, who you may play a quarterback this week, or what's the situation with Coach with uh, Malcolm Bell? Just don't know. Uh, it's day to day with Malcolm. You know, he didn't practice at all last week. Uh, you know, at all. He probably threw two passes, and you know, he came in. He's pretty much sore and pretty much injured and down. Uh, so we'll reevaluate him this week and, and see how everything's uh, see how everything goes. Uh, you know, we feel comfortable in Quinn. You know, we have no uh, reservations about playing Quinn. We said it all along. Uh, you know, he, he knows how to manage the game. He had a pretty good game on, on last week. But uh, you know, it's just kind of a game time decision day to day, and we'll take it take it like that. When you look at the uh, you look at the A and T team, what stands out? Uh, what what aspect of that team stands out? Do you think maybe give you guys the most trouble? Uh, you know, on the defense side of the football, uh, their linebacker core is extremely active. They do a great job of flying to the football. Uh, on the offense side of the football, I think everybody knows Tyreek Cohen is one of the premier backs in the country. Uh, so those two aspects, offense and defense, uh, you know, we're going to have our hands full because they present a lot of issues running the football, and, you know, they're extremely good at, at their second level on their defense. I know uh, Patricia kind of asked you this about the uh, overall uh, how you – uh, see your teams play. Uh, is this team uh, overperformed? You think performed up to the level that you think, or you actually thought that you could even be better than you are? I mean, you're coming to the last game with a chance to win a piece of the championship. I think, and you you can correct me. I, I'm not looking at it, but you were certainly weren't finished. To, you weren't picked in the preseason to finish anywhere near the top. What do you have to say about that? Uh, you know, I think this team. Uh you know, we're underachieved a little bit. You know, I told the guys yesterday, you know, really we're one point away or two points away, however you want to look at it, from this being for the uh, overall championship. We lost to Morgan State by one point. Uh, so, you know, that that was the difference. We didn't take care of business early in the race, and we put ourselves in a position that we thought we might have been out of it. But, you know, obviously we're not. But, uh, you know, I, I'm extremely proud of this football team. Uh, I, I thought they did some good things. Like I said, these seniors have, have went through a lot. This team has went through a lot in the last – uh, over the last three to four years. So to come out and, you know, play like they play for this coaching staff and for our seniors, I think it's a compliment compliment to those guys. Uh, and like you said, we weren't finished anywhere at the top, but we always knew as a football team we just got to do what we have to do. And uh, we always felt like we had a pretty good football team. We had some adversity throughout the year. But, you know, the true mark of a champion is, you know, how he overcomes adversity, and I think that's what they've shown. Oh, and lastly, Coach, what do you think has been the biggest thing you've had to work on or develop or teach these guys? Just how to finish. Uh, you know, just you know, sometimes when you've been in a situation where you haven't had a lot of success over the last few years, you don't know how to close out football games. You don't know how to close out opponents. So uh, we got better at that every week. We had our ups and downs. But I saw it all come together last week against Norfolk, and we're just going to try to continue to do that this week. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. Thank you. Our next question comes on the line of John McCann of Harold Sun. Please proceed. Coach, I can only imagine uh, as a parent yourself that when you think about your squad, man, it's going to be a very easy lesson going into next season just to look at the tape and say, guys, we've got a chance at a piece of the championship this time around, but if y'all just listen to what we try to teach you about closing out, man, this thing would have been all ours. Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right, John. I mean, you know, and that's what you got to do. You, you know, that you learn from your mistakes, and, and you just try to move forward and, and continue to get better. But uh, one thing about it is we're still in a position, you know, our goal at the beginning of the season was to try to win and compete for a championship. And, you know, it's, right, it's sitting right in front of us right now. So, you know, we just got to take advantage of the opportunity presented in front of us. What's the uh, nature of Malcolm Bell's injury? Uh, it's just day-to-day. -day. We, we, we don't really have any idea until we get out there and start practicing and, and see what he can and cannot do. And uh, So, you know, it's probably going to be a game-time decision because I know he's still kind of banged up, so we'll see. What, what's, what's the injury itself? Uh, not not don't want to disclose that at this moment. Okay, okay. You know, Coach, what are you telling your quarterbacks, man, early in the season when it was kind of building a show? When it was time for Malcolm to step up, he was ready. Last week, uh, it's, it's, it's been Billerman, and it's, it's been Malcolm for show, but when it came time for Billerman, he was able to go on the field like a fall. Yeah, I mean, we tell them all the time, you know, you, you, everybody's on scholarship, so, you know, everybody's, when your number's called, it's time to, uh, it's time to, to perform. Not only uh, uh, Quinn, but, you know, we also had a couple of players suspended that couldn't go, and we had some, uh, some, some backups, so, so to speak, in some roles 
uh, on the offensive side of the football, and they came to play too. You know, our left tackle was, uh, you know, our right tackle was suspending Chris Presley, and you know, our, we, we put Philip Mitchell in, and, and he performed well. So, uh, you know, it's just part of football. You know, what, the next man's up. That's our motto. And you know, when one goes down, you got to be ready to step up and rise to the occasion. You you express confidence in, in Billerman, but would you would you would you certainly say that the lack of production on offense was being without Malcolm? Uh, it's kind of the, the flow of the game. I don't think it was necessarily because of Quinn or, uh, or not having Malcolm. Uh, just kind of the flow of the game. You know, they controlled. They did a good job controlling the clock. And you know, when we got opportunities, we fumbled the ball a couple of times, so we didn't. We weren't able to. We lost some possessions, uh, potential yards on those possessions because of turnovers. So it was more so because of the turnovers, we weren't able to get a drive going. You know, so you look at it, and, and that's two to three less turnovers that we had uh, during the course of the game. And, you know, that, that controls the production as well. You know, when you, when you look at Felix Small over on defense, he's coming up with a lot of forced, uh, a lot of forced fumbles. Is, is, is he stripping the ball, or is he just cold cocking jokes? Uh, it's a little bit of both. You know, Felix has a lot of force behind when he tackles uh, individuals, and that's one thing you're seeing. You know, as he brings them to the ground, that ball is getting jarred loose. And also, too, you know, he, he's done a great job of, you know, coming from the backside and, and get a great pass rush, and he's knocking the ball down from the quarterback. So, you know, he's just an explosive player, and sometimes when you're an explosive player, you know, sometimes you don't have to hit a, hit a guy head on. You just you t- bring guys to the, to the ground with a lot of force. And my last question, Coach, uh, would you say the experiment with Ty Brown uh, has worked this season? I think it has. I think Ty has not only, uh, you know, helped himself as far as potentially being an NFL prospect, He's also helped our football team and, pro- and provided some pressure that we needed at times on the quarterback. And uh, I thought last week against Norfolk was one of his better performances. Hey, Coach, I appreciate it. Thank you. Our next question comes to the line of DeAndre Harris of ESPN. Please proceed. Actually, this is Ty Miller with Sheridan Broadcasting. Good morning to you, Coach. Hey, good morning, Ty. Coach, uh, last year uh, you weren't there, of course, but uh, – North Carolina A&T beat NC Central 28 nothing. But have any of the players or can any of the players provide you with any insight about that game last year because there were some on the team last season? Yeah, uh, you know, our graduate assistant right now is uh, Jordan Reed, and, uh, you know, he was the quarterback in that game last year. Uh, it was just a situation where, you know, turnovers uh, provided A&T with a short field. We went back and watched the film as well. Uh, it was one of those things where, you know, once, once A&T kind of got the momentum, you know, Central never could really get back in the flow of the game. So, you know, football is a game of momentum, like we say all the time. And, you know, the momentum carried those guys to pretty much a shutout last year. Coach, you look at uh, North Carolina a ts offense, and it starts with their running game, and they average about 208 yards per game. Now, if you can keep them at or near or under that mark, do you, you like your chances even better? Uh, we do. I mean, you know, they, they run the ball extremely well, so that means they control the clock extremely well. Uh, you know, so we got to do a great job. It is any game. Anybody that controls the line of scrimmage is going to have a chance to, to win the football game. So, you know, the key is to try to outrush your opponent and, and to control the line of scrimmage. So uh, that's what we got to focus on, not so much their average as, as, as so much. We just got to do a great job controlling the line of scrimmage and playing our game. And, Coach, looking back on MEAC Media Day way back in August and to look at today, you sound as eager right now as you were back then to get started. So how eager are you to get to this game this weekend? Uh, we're extremely excited about this game, to send our seniors out on a winning note and, and to try to g- grab a piece of that 